Alright, well the first thing we do in removing of the O2 sensor is we have to climb up in the engine compartment and if you're a big guy, forget it. Because you got to reach back, way back to the back here with both hands. I can't do it with the camera in my hand. But the cable to disconnect it is way back here. You need to reach back down there with both hands and you need to use a little flat blade screwdriver like this and you slide it inside the little clip and pull it out and it is attached to the back of the engine area um, and mine actually popped off and I don't know if I broke it or if it just came off um, when I pulled it off just now. Let me see if I can pull it out of here so you can see it. Okay, here's what it looks like and yeah it looks like I actually broke it off so I'll have to tie wrap it back on when I put it back together Anyway, this is a bugger to get to. This is the first part that's a bugger. And then I'll get under the car and show you how to do the other part. Okay, I'm under the car. This is the drive shaft right here. So Gives you an idea of where we're at orientation wise. The O2 sensor is, you can kind of see it up in there. You gotta be able to get a wrench between uh, the, that linkage, which is, you can see right here, this linkage here is the shift linkage and the body which they got that dumb tab or something up here I don't know if you can see it or not it's in your way of your hands anyway you got to get a, a open end wrench in there I believe 22 millimeter and uh, loosen that and then once you get that loose then you can use both hands coming through the wheel well coming around over here let me see if I can show you and I can reach through here and get to the sensor over there. I don't know if you can see my see my hand. So I can work on the sensor and get to it with both hands once it's broken loose. It's not easy. So you can kind of see up in there. Oh, as you can see, I'm probably not doing it very well. And you can get to it and unscrew that sucker. Uh, and then once you get it out, of course, it's just the reverse of that. And tighten it back up. Anyway, let me get it out and I'll show you what I got. Okay, this is the O2 sensor. And, uh, I don't know if it's <laughs> supposed to be damaged. Anyway, we're going to replace it here in a few minutes. The cable's actually a little shorter than the one I bought. Oh, that's not good. See that little cut right there? That might have been the problem right there. It's a bad connection. It might have been frayed wires. Anyway, um, let me show you the replacement sensor. Here's the replacement sensor. Make sure you hold them up next to each other. Make sure they're the same. Make sure the connectors are the same. Compare the two. pretty much look the same to me so alright I'm gonna now do the reverse and install this puppy uh... probably not gonna be easy but I'm gonna go for it it, was, it wasn't easy to get out either so I want to show you this is a uh, Bosch brand O2 sensor you can buy at your uh, favorite auto parts store and um, the model for this one a uh, number, I mean, is uh, 15717. So, anyway, I'm about ready to put it in and uh, see how it goes. Alright, we're going to start uh, installing it. I don't know if this is going to, and we're going to fit here and you can see it or not, but I'll leave it running. Uh, you got to slide the sensor up through this little opening wire first. And then I reach around and go through the wheel well side and grab it with my right hand, pull it on up through. Make sure you leave that plastic cover on until you get it up inside so that you don't contaminate it. And once it's you're up in there, I can get around here. Yeah. Let's here. I don't know. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put it in and then I'll check back with you in a minute. Okay, I have the sensor in place now and I don't know if you can see it or not up in there. The wrench is on there. It's open in box wrench. Um, and you're gonna have to make, make little like quarter turns and then rotate it, turn it another quarter turn. I don't know if I can do that and hold the camera at the same time, but you can see. So I'm gonna turn it a little bit like that. And I rotate it, quarter turn, get another bite on it, and then rotate it again. And just get it fairly snug. Oops, there goes my light. And that's that's it. Done. And I go up top and I'll hook up the Okay. Now we're up top. You can see there's the top connector. And I'm gonna plug in, reach down there and get the other one. Which is uh down here. So I'm gonna put the camera down and hook these up. They're keyed, they'll only go in one way, so make sure you get the keying correct. Okay, so I got them plugged in here. You can kind of see it there. Um, the cable that I bought, the Bosch cable, is a little longer, but they give you um, they give you tie wraps, zip ties to zip tie it up. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and zip tie it up to the cabling that's hanging back in here, and keep it out of the way. And then that's basically it. And we'll be done. Um, I'll check back with you. Okay, so I was able to zip tie that up out of the way right there. They can cut that tab off there, but it's back out of the way, it's safe. And it's actually a much better location if you ever have to take it off again. It's easier to get to uh, the way it is now. Anyway, here's a couple notes before we uh, finish up here. Uh, you can rent a wrench from your places like AutoZone and O'Reilly's. Uh, it may or may not fit up in there. I don't know, this side, which is the driver's side, is really difficult for any kind of wrench to get up in there. The open end wrench seemed to be the easiest, for me, anyway. But you can rent them, or if you want, you can buy them. But they're like $30, and I figure $30 and you can replace this thing once, maybe twice in the life of the truck. I don't know if you could justify spending that kind of money. Anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to notice, note is I'm a fairly skinny guy, so I was able to get underneath the truck pretty easy. But uh, you may want to jack the truck up on this side and be able to get up underneath. Uh, you can't really get to it from on here, just going down through here. There's just really difficult. So I would just suggest not even trying. Anyway, hopefully this helps you. And uh, if you liked it, then uh, check back. I may have other things that I'll be replacing soon and you can get tips on and you can certainly subscribe to my channel. Thanks and I'll talk to you later. Alright, one last note before we close up here. You probably want to um, either rent or go purchase one of these type uh, uh, OBD readers and clear the any air codes so that you can see that uh, whether or not your replacement of the sensor actually fixed it or not.